dearly beloved, worshiping the Lord, praising Him has a power in it. So even though we are worshiping Him with uh, contemporary uh, worship songs that uh, are used by evangelical Christian churches or traditional hymns in a contemporary style, doesn't matter. The most important is that we open our hearts to God and we praise Him and worship Him. So we lift Him up on high and we confess and profess with that that He is God and He is worthy of our praising. Amen. So I would like to welcome you again, dear the beloved, uh, those of you who are here, dear members uh, of First Hungarian Reformed Church of uh, Walton Hills in uh, Ohio, in the state of Ohio, and also our dear guests this morning and friends and uh, those who are watching uh, this uh, worship, contemporary worship service through the YouTube channels. We welcome you and uh, we ask the Lord's blessing upon your lives. So uh, this morning, uh, before we go into uh, the teaching and the topic uh, of, uh, of that uh, teaching that I would like to share with you, uh, let us bow our heads and let us pray to the Lord. Your gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and give thanks that we are here in your sanctuary, in your house, in the house of prayer. And thank you, Lord, that we, we started our worship service with praising and worshiping you uh, through these beautiful songs, contemporary uh, worship songs, and also traditional worship songs in a contemporary style. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we may lift up our hearts to you and we may lift your name on high. And uh, we are here to praise you and dedicate our body, our spirit, our souls to you. Heavenly Father, please open our ears, open our hearts, open our uh, minds, uh, our, our eyes, so we may hear, accept, and uh, see uh, your, your word, and uh, we may walk according to, to your will in this life. Holy Spirit, please help us, guide us, and uh, help us that this, this teaching would be a blessing for each and every one of us here in this sanctuary, for those who are watching uh, through the YouTube. Please bless each and every one of us and help us to glorify your name, living the life that glorifies and prays your name, Heavenly Father. In your name, Jesus, we pray in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. We all know the key statement of Shakespeare's famous drama, The Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. And this statement inspired me to raise the question, to be a Christian or not to be? To be a Christian or not to be? Dear friends, following Jesus is not an easy task in our days. Moreover, according to my observation experience, following Jesus, being a Christian, in today's society is very difficult. We live in an era and society which is secular and selfish. We don't have to go so far. If you just step out of this church's doors and you live in the secular world, you immediately face these issues, these problems. You will meet people with secular way of thinking. They don't believe in God. They don't accept the values, the Christian values that you and I accept. They are selfish. They are thinking about themselves and they are doing things just for themselves. You are meeting that with that every day in your lives. In addition to that, I noticed that self-praise and self selfish lifestyles are one of the greatest problems today. And I brought you an illustration regarding that. People are so thrilled, so happy when they are just thinking about material possessions. It's because we live in a wealth society and many, many people are thinking about wealth. If there is a dollar raining, then uh, life is great, life is beautiful, every, every problem is solved. 
Dear friends, even though we live in a wealthy, uh, wealthy society compared to many countries in the world, which basically is a blessing, okay, living in America, in a wealth, wealthy society that you can go into the store and you don't have to think hundred times that sh should I buy that particular item or not, because uh, we usually have the money to buy that certain thing, especially what we need for our lives. So this is a blessing for us. If you think in other uh, areas and other countries in this world, for example in Ukraine nowadays, they don't have the wealthy society at all. You can bet that. They are struggling, especially they are in the middle of a horrible, horrible war. And many times they feel on their skins what it means to live in this secular world, in this evil world. Dear friends, uh, just around Christmas, uh, at our house, we did not have electricity for several hours, two times, uh, just before Christmas. Actually, uh, one of the power outage was uh, on the day of Christmas Eve, when we came here at night uh, for a service, for a candlelight uh, uh, communion service. And for four hours, we did not have electricity. That was very inconvenient, but after several hours, we got the power back and we were able to live our, um, our usual uh, lifestyle. Yeah. But during that four hours, you, you turned on the light that was uh, you as a routine when you went into a room or in the kitchen or wherever, and you turned the lights on, oh, there is no power. Okay. Or you wanted to cook uh, something, a food, you know, Viada wanted to fix a, a, a lunch. She could not do it. We wanted to make a, a tea, we could not do it. it. Took four hours, but it was very, very inconvenient. So think about it. Think about those, especially those who are living in Ukraine or, uh, or our Hungarian, our fellow Hungarian people who live in uh, Transcarpathia, in Karpatoya, and they don't have power for days, maybe. So we have much to pray for for these dear people there, for the people of Ukraine, for our Hungarian, fellow Hungarian people. So we are so blessed here. But in the same time, worshipping of material things can turn us away from God and from following Christ. Because what? You are worshipping money, as the guy does on the picture. Additionally, there are two major challenges when we talk about being a Christian following Christ, because Christian means being Christ-like, being a Christ-like person, following Christ. So the one challenge is nominal, nominal Christianity. That people say that they are Christians, but their lifestyle, their, how they live their lives, that does not demonstrate at all. And the second one is worldliness, that the secular world uh, invaded into Christian people's lives and they cannot resist, so that's a constant struggle for them. And many times they give in and they, uh, they say that they cannot follow Christianity, even though, even though they, uh, they express it through words or they just think it, but they cannot keep up with the Christian values and and uh, following Jesus Christ. So these are two major challenges for your life and for my life. Jesus warns us that this life's worries, riches, and pleasures can choke the growth of His Word in people's hearts and they do not mature. However, richness and selfishness are not new phenomenon at all, since we find examples for it even in the Bible. 2,000 years ago, there was a story when we exactly find that this is not a new phenomenon, this is not in the, just in the 20th or 21st century uh, problem or issue that people are selfish, that people are just dealing with richness, just money, just material possessions, but it happened throughout the decades, centuries. One day Jesus encountered a rich young ruler 
He was a prominent leader, a young leader of his society in Israel. And this young man had a major question in his mind. Something bothered him. Something bothered him that he could not get the answer from his fellow people, from his family members, friends, anyone. He heard about Jesus. He heard about the, the teachings Jesus uh, shared with others uh, in, in the past uh, one, and, one or two years. So he came to Christ. He came to Christ because he was interested in the person of Jesus and he had this question in his heart and in his mind. He asked this significant question. We could uh, compliment this young man, rich young man, uh, for approaching Jesus because uh, he was brave enough to do that. So he, he was a good guy. The question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to inherit eternal life? This was his question and this was a valid question, dearly beloved, and this is a question you have in your mind and in your heart and I have in my, and in, in my heart. Because this is not a secondary issue that what will happen with you after you die, after you leave this world, okay? Once in a lifetime, I bet, you have asked this question or you were thinking about it. And that applies to everyone in this world. What will happen to me after I die? Because we're gonna die. We're gonna die. We're not gonna hear, live here in this world forever. One day, the day will come. As Mr. Kardar, if you remember, he always said that Jesus, uh, when God will call him, come on, this is what he told me when I visited him. And he was right. God will call us one day to appear in his presence. You don't know the day, I don't know the day, but this will happen. One day, Come, we will go, and we have to stand before the judgment seat of God. So, dear friends, this man, this young man, had this question What must I do to inherit eternal life? Valid question, important, very important question. So, Jesus, when he looked at him, uh, Jesus began to talk with this uh, rich young man, starting with the commandments, and he said, uh, Jesus said, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not murder, uh, honor your father and mother, and so on and so forth. And the young man said, the rich young the ruler, Jesus, I have kept these commandments since uh, from thy early age, from my childhood. And Jesus looked at this young man and, and he, he liked this young man. And he said that uh, he's, he's a nice guy. He's an honest guy. He was not lying. Because he really tried to do his best to follow God and live the life according to the commandments. However, Jesus knew the heart of this young man also. He knew who he was. He knew his thinking. He knew uh, the, the, the phase of his heart. And Jesus said this, very interesting. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Dearly beloved, there was an interesting thing in this young man's life. There was him, there was God, and there was a big, huge wall in between. And that wall is called riches or material possessions. This young man tried to reach God and tried to do everything to have a fruitful and effective relationship with his God Almighty, but there was a huge wall in between, between him and God. And he can't, could not overcome, he could not break it through. There was richness, the problem, that did not let him, that actually, uh, that, that was an obstacle in his life to get to God freely. How many of you know this story? How many of you know and remember? Okay, very good. Do you remember what was the answer of this young man to Jesus' statement? Do you remember? It's hard to do uh, for a rich man to put 
That was Jesus' answer. But what was the rich young ruler's? Good, uh, good answer, actually, but that was Jesus's. But do you know what was his answer? Actually, he did not say a word, but he did something. When he heard this, then come and follow me, so sell your possessions. He that was his... He went home sick. That's it. That's it. He went home. Basically, he didn't get the answer he wanted. Basically, what he did was this. He turned his back on Jesus. Okay. He turned. That was his unsaid answer of this young ruler. Christ offered two ways to this young man that are offered to each and every one of us. And he is offering it even today. It's either me or something, someone else. To follow or not to follow me. To be a Christian or not to be. Which one do you choose? Which one do you want in your everyday life? When I was younger, I went to the theater to see a play from Carlo Baldini, and the title was The, Servants, uh, the Servant of Two Masters. This romantic comedy, I highly recommend to anyone if you are able to watch it, either through YouTube or uh, in the theater, please go. It's, it's very funny and, uh, and worth it to, to see. So this romantic comedy is basically about a servant, his name was Trafaldino, who is looking for employer employment in uh, Venice, in Italy. Early in the play, he hires himself to, first, uh, to a first master and then to another one. And we find that both uh, masters, a man and a woman, are visitors in Venice and are looking for one another. They were a, pa a pair, you know, partners. The events become more and more complicated as the demands of his two masters constantly interrupt his attempts and result, uh, results great conflicts, confusion, difficulty for him. Why this play is very funny, I, uh, again, I greatly enjoyed it when I uh, saw this play back in Hungary, but it brings uh, the audience to a conclusion that it is impossible to serve two masters at the same time. It is impossible. It is impossible to serve them with the same passion and commitment. One always gets less, that's for sure. One always gets less, and actually, at the end, everyone loses. No doubt why Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will devote it to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. All right? How do you live your life as a Christian? How do you live out your Christian faith in the everyday life? How do you follow Christ? What does it mean to be a Christian, for example, in your family, at your work, in the store, or on the roads when you drive? If someone is a Christian, it means, dearly beloved, something very important. And let's talk about number one step. And I brought you a quotation from Billy Graham. I don't have to introduce him to you. He is a trusted man. Amen? So he says, Being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. All right? That's step number one. You have to do that in order to have a relationship, a fruitful relationship with Christ. That's, that is first, uh, and the first step and number one, that you have to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord, either in an uh, instant decision, that you make a decision that, yes, from this day on, I want to follow Christ, or that's a process in your life, that in the meantime, you realize again and again that you need God in your life, you need Christ, 
and you want to walk with him. And that can be a process as well. The, the end result is that you accept Christ in your life. So, going back, being a Christian is more than just an inst instantaneous conversion. It is like a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. A process. A process that you and I need to walk in the everyday life. If someone is a Christian, it means, dear friends, that he or she followed Jesus Christ, has a relationship with Him daily, and grows in faith. In every area of life, whether you are a mother or a wife, a husband or a father, a grandfather, a grandmother, uh, uh, an employee or an employer, an, uh, or even a student, Whoever we are, whatever we do in this life, Jesus says this, I want you to be my follower where you are. Where you are. You cannot be Jesus' follower where you are not. But God placed you there, in your family, among your friends, with your colleagues at work, for a purpose, for a reason. God placed you here in this church. This is not an accident that you are here in this church. You belong to the First Anglican Reformed Church. God placed you there where you are for a reason. And Jesus wants you to be his follower, an obedient servant, and a great instrument in his mighty hand. Jesus says you cannot follow the world and me in the same time. So, dear friends, it's very important to live our Christian faith out in the everyday basis. It is important that wherever we go, whenever we talk with someone, showing and demonstrating that we are Christian, Christ-like people. Is it easy? At the beginning of the sermon I said, it's not easy at all. But we always have a wonderful Savior and Lord. We can approach when we fall when we did not act according to god's ways when we did not show the, uh, the christian values then we can run to god and we can always pour our hearts to him and ask for forgiveness and he is gracious and loving merciful and he forgives us and we are able to continue to walk with him and demonstrate the next time that we are christians an American Jewish businessman decided to send his son to Israel for a year to absorb some of the culture of the homeland. He did not want his son, obviously, to be uh, to Americanize 100%, but let's check out uh, the Jewish culture, where they uh, came from uh, early. So when the son returned after the year, after the one year, the father asked him about his trip, and the son said, Father, I had a great time in Israel. Oh, and by the way, I converted to Christianity. Oh my, said the father, what have I done? So the father decided to go and ask his old friend Jacob what to do. Jacob said, that is interesting what you are saying. I also sent my son to Israel and came back a Christian. Perhaps we should go to the rabbi and ask him what we should do. So they both went to the rabbi and told him about their problem. The rabbi said, That is interesting what you are saying, because I also sent my son to Israel and he came back a Christian. What is happening to our sons? Then all three of them prayed to God for their sons and asked God, what to do. Suddenly a voice came from heaven loud and clear and said, that is interesting what you are saying. I also sent my son to Israel. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we cannot argue with this statement. We cannot argue with God, with God's statement, because he sent his son our Savior Jesus Christ into this world. He was born in Bethlehem, in Israel. 
and the purpose of his coming, the purpose of his ministry, of his life here on earth, was not more and, than, and less than to die for you and for me on the cross so he would redeem us from our sins. This was his mission here on earth, to die for you and for me here on earth so he would redeem us from our sins and he would offer eternal life and life in him. I participated at a, at a Christian conference in 1990 that was a youth with a mission, you know, an American missionary organization. Uh, and uh, they held a conference right after the big changes back in Hungary when, when communism uh, ended in, in Hungary. And, uh, and it was open now to, uh, to all confer Christian conferences, gatherings, you know, and uh, so we were not in, in trouble anymore. Uh, so uh, Christians were not arrested or persecuted anymore. Uh, under uh, like they were under a communist regime. So uh, there was a conference there in Budapest, uh, uh, the capital city, and an American missionary from the Youth Freedom Mission came and he was the main speaker and uh, his name was Floyd uh, McClung and at the time he uh, had a ministry in Amsterdam uh, at the uh, Red uh, Lamp uh, area and uh, that was where the, where the prostitutes and drug dealers uh, were and, uh, and that was a horrible, very difficult uh, area and ministry uh, for Floyd and his colleagues. But uh, God called them there and uh, they had everyday ministry and uh, conversation with these people. They were the most sinners in the world. So uh, Floyd uh, came to Budapest and had this conference and he was uh, talking and he was teaching based on the story of the prodigal son. And, uh, uh, and that uh, came up uh, that, uh, on the conference when uh, you argue with God. And he asked this question, and, that, and it's still in my mind the way he asked it, and uh, it sticked into my heart as well. And uh, Floyd asked, have you ever argued with God? Have you ever argued with God? You always lose. You always lose. Because he's God, we are not. He knows the best, and many times we don't. Although we try to know, and we think we know, what would be the best for each and every one of us and for our lives. But God knows it better. So dearly beloved, that's why it's so important to listen to God, because He created you and me. He sent His Son, as we heard, to die for us on the cross. So He knows how we should operate as human beings, how we should live our lives to His glory that would enrich each and every one of us. So we can follow Christ only by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And Christ is here, dear friends. Christ is here by His Spirit to help you to walk on this, on this path, on this road of life, so you may live an effective and fruitful life to His glory. The question is, would you let Him to lead your life? Would you let Him to work in your life the way he wants. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and we give thanks for giving us this blessing that we may walk with you. We are Christians, Lord. We are Christians and because we are Christians we want to do things, we want to say things, we want to think like Jesus did. Forgive us, O oh Lord, when we are not obeying, when we do the exactly opposite what you teach us. You teach us in your word. You teach us uh, when we have the Sunday morning worship services. Please forgive us our sins, Lord, and forgive when we do not represent you as heavenly ambassadors, as divine ambassadors, because you have called us to share your Son, Jesus Christ, with everyone. This is our calling, this is our mission for our church and for each and every one of us. Oh Lord, please bless us and help us so when the, when the temptations come, 
when the world comes into our lives, when secular way of thinking comes, Lord, help us to resist it and help us to rely, continue to rely on you and know that you know what the best is for each and every one of us. Lord, you see our, our temptations, our difficulties, our trials in our lives. Please help us, guide us. Lord, we pray for the people in Ukraine and especially the, the fellow Hungarians in uh, Transcarpathia. Lord, please bless their lives. Please ease their difficulties. Please, most of all, bring peace into the life of the, the Ukrainian nation. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our church. We pray for our dear brothers and sisters, those who are in assisted living facilities, in nursing homes, or those who are homebound or in hospitals. Please, Lord, help them and ease their difficulties and help us to be useful instruments in your mighty hand so we may bring your blessing into your people's lives. Lord, please continue to help our church. Bless those who are here this morning, those who could not come for any reason. Bless those who are watching through YouTube our worship service and worship services. Please help each and every one of us to be professing Christians to your glory, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.